Hi, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're discussing template-driven forms. I know it sounds impossible, but there were times when there was no internet or even computer. So in those times we had to fill out good old paper forms when we wanted to visit a doctor or to apply for various personal documents. So web forms are nothing different except they're digital. Angular supports two design approaches for interactive forms. Template-driven forms are suitable for small or simple forms, while reactive forms are more scalable and suitable for complex forms. This tutorial shows you how to build a form from scratch. First, import forms module in your app root module. Let's first build our path class, which defines a data model reflected in our form. I will have three properties, ID, name, and species. Now, let's import our class in the app component. Define species in species array. Now, create a model from the pet class and pass the values for our pet. Here we are using dummy data, but in your real app you would use a service to get the data from the API and to save it. Also, let's add submitted property, which will change depending on the state of the form and on submit method. Next, in our HTML file, we will create a form that reflects our data model. Create a form and inside it two divs for two fields. First will be name input. And I'm adding label and required attribute to our input. And the second one will be a select, which will loop through an array of species to show all the values from the array. Same as for input, I'm adding label for our select and also I will add required attribute. Then I will use ng4 to loop through the, all the values and display them. If you run the application right now, you see the list of species in the selection control. The input elements are not yet bound to data values or events, so they are still blank and have no behavior. The next step is to bind the input controls to the corresponding pet properties with two-way data binding so that they respond to the user input by updating the data model and also respond to programmatic changes in the data by updating the display. The ng model directive declared in the forms module lets you bind controls in your template-driven form to properties in your data model. Add the ng model directive using two-way data binding syntax. For the name, use model.name. And for species, use model.species value. When you use ng model on an element, you must define a name attribute for that element. Angular uses the assigned name to register the element with the ng form directive attached to the parent form element. So, in order to register our form, add a template reference variable with a value of ng form. The pet form template variable is now a reference to the ng form directive instance that governs the form as a whole. In order to test our application, place the model object in our template with a JSON pipe. Now, if you update your form films, you will see that model is being updated. Now the user should be able to submit this form after filling it. Create a submit button on the bottom. The submit button at the bottom of the form does nothing on its own 
but it does trigger a form submit event because of its type, submit. To respond to this event, take the following steps. Bind the form's ng-submit event property to the pet form component on submit method. Use the template reference variable pet form to access the form that contains the submit button and create an event binding. You will bind the form property that indicates its overall validity to the submit button's disabled property. Run the application now. Notice that the button is enabled, although it doesn't do anything useful yet. Delete the name value. This violates the required rule, so it disables the submit button. To show a response to form submission, you can hide the data entry area and display something else in its place. Wrap the entire form in a div and bind its hidden property to the app component submitted property. The main form is visible from the start because the submitted property is false until you submit the form, as this fragment from the app component shows. To show something else while the form is in submitted state, add the following HTML below the new div wrapper. Add the properties that you updated and the edit button if the user wants to update the fields again. And now let's preview how it works. And that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something useful. Make sure to subscribe as I'm gonna continue to cover form tutorials in the next couple of videos so you don't want to miss that. Until then, take care.